right, hey everybody, another episode of Nerds Drink Whiskey. Uh, always sip, never slam. Uh, especially this month, because uh, we're kind of low-balling this, this month. And uh, last week it was Crown Royal. This, this week it's uh, SoCo, also known as Southern Comfort. Uh, now this is uh, 70 proof, but yet I'm still a little afraid. So, uh, I don't know. I'm afraid but, uh, it's SoCo, and I haven't drank that since high school. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been a while. So, uh, we're going to have uh, Dogger himself uh, come up and pour. And uh, if you haven't noticed, this is our second time filming at, at Dogger's in Yelm. And uh, the reason that we do it here is uh, we've tried to, we tried to uh, do this show at many different uh, bars. And... Uh, we, there's always been some kind of issue. Whoa. Some Better kind of issue. Better wait for the auditor. And, uh, but here, I gotta say that, that we felt welcomed. This is the first time, place we've done our show where we felt welcomed. So, so uh, well, we so you. I'm gonna actually, this is, this is just, uh, Dogger doesn't know I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna give him an unofficial slogan. And the unofficial slogan for this place is, Doggers, you will be welcomed here. So uh, that's, that's the one reason why we've returned. We've already scheduled with you for August 4th to return for a third time. And uh, each time, uh, between the two times we've gotten here, uh, we get a little bigger crowd each time. And uh, we're going to make a habit out of this. So uh, thank you for making us feel so welcomed. And uh, we're going we're gonna to try uh, the... the uh, we, uh, we keep telling him to pour light, but I don't think Dogger knows how to pour light. So uh, if, if you like good pours, he, he, he'll give you a good pour. Mark, one thing before we start, I, I got to apologize to you guys because I'm, I'm the newbie here. I slammed that. Uh, last week I slammed mine. I apologize. I didn't follow the sip. Oh, so, always uh, sip, yeah. never slam. You can punish me later. <laughs> one do thing not I do notice tempt right now, Mark with a good time. Yeah, the one thing I do notice right now, I can smell it from here. I smell a sweet smell before I even. Yes, it's got a very syrupy, like sweet. Uh, that's what SoCo really is. That, it's the caramel flavoring that's in there. Okay. Wow. The initial taste is a cross between pancakes and licorice. Yeah, I was going to say there was some sort of licorice -y kind of anise flavor about it. Yeah. It's also a lot darker than a lot of whiskeys we uh, come across. I think that may be, I don't know, it, it, like I said, it's, it's a very syrupy, very yeah. uh, like pancake syrup, uh, licorice, and kind of a mixture of the two. Uh, With maybe a little bit of maple in there, just yeah, a little bit. Saying, just maple syrup, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but uh, this doesn't have near the... Uh, uh, turpentine -y kind no. of finish. No, not at all. It's just no, like not at all. Uh, um, yeah, this just seems like very sugary. I, very, I, 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 I don't think I've ever had this before, I come to think of it. And the 70 I'm proof? I'm actually kind of surprised. I expected general. it to be absolutely horrible. The 70 proof or in general? In general, I think. Oh, yeah, really? Is okay. there more than one? I'm used, I, actually, to, the, I I'm used to the 100 proof stuff myself. And, I mean, this is kind of not bad. Vibe, but... Yeah, this is not bad, but of course it's only 70 proof. That's probably why it's not yeah, getting the... Uh, seriously, SoCo is actually really, 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 really good stuff for really cheap. It's, yeah. it's, for 70 proof, this is really not bad. It goes down really, really easy. There's no real bite to it. It's just very syrupy sweet. So There's no way 70 proof could have a bite, I don't think. Yeah, uh, that's what's true. The, uh, what's the, the cost on the shot? $7 a shot. This is seven. Now the last one was seven as well, right? Yeah, I actually uh, had a memory of the first time I had SoCo was in California in Sacramento, and we were getting half gallons of it for twenty bucks, I think. And we usually returned for one more half gallon. It's really good stuff, and it's really light. The being the That's lower proof, it's That's easier to drink. But if you drink a little more of it than you should, you will definitely feel it the next day. So I always suggest a lot of water with this one. Lots of water. That is a very I good call, actually, right. Dogger. I have learned that lesson more than once. I uh, agree with uh, Dodger on there. After the initial taste, it, it has a really light flow, and then until it hits the back of my throat, then you taste the second flavor of it. And the original, the, to me, it's like a sweet, then there's like almost nothing. Then it hits your throat, and then you get like the maple. So that, that's... Seems like it'd make a nice cough syrup. It's kind of like NyQuil, yeah, but you're... much more pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way more pleasant than NyQuil, I'd say, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, kind of what, what I expected when I saw it was 70, 70 proof. Um, but, 
Not sure if I'd ever buy it uh, outside of the uh, outside of the show, but uh, um, yeah, I think I definitely prefer uh, some Pappy Van Winkle, but that might be a little bit higher priced. Um, no, you so, think? Uh, Maybe, just a little bit. Just uh, for the, a little. For those of you who don't know, uh, the most sought-after uh, American whiskey is actually a, a brand called Pappy Van Winkle, and uh, shots go, like, as high as, like, I mean, they, they go around, like, around $250, $500 a shot. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, Southern Comfort, if you're, I think, out of the, the two this month, so far, so, uh, the SoCo 70 is, is probably uh, top. Out of the two, would you say? I probably, I absolutely dislike licorice, so that is my only issue with this. Otherwise, I'd be all over it. Well, I don't know if even I'd if be all licorice, over it, but this month, it's even, still the best. Even if the licorice is dipped in uh, uh, maple syrup? That's a hard one. <laughs> if he doesn't like licorice, remind me to send him a bottle of Sambuca for Christmas. Yeah, I'll all pass right. it. All right. So, uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to drink it. I'm going to drink absinthe. It's way too uh, sweet. There you go. Way just absinthe okay. then. So, uh, uh, also, uh, just so you know, we, we've now recently heard that from the makers of Dead Drift and uh, the horror, locally produced horror movie Penny Palabras, uh, they are doing a... Uh, now doing a puppet movie uh, for uh, Roscoe, uh, which is a cat, and he's a junkyard cat. And uh, basically, he's trying to get out. He's trying to get out and escape the junkyard. But every time he escapes the junkyard, he dies. Uh, so, uh, but anyways, uh, we're going to have them on the show in a couple of months. Uh, maybe have Roscoe himself, the junkyard cat. And uh, but uh, that's something that uh, we'll be hearing more about in the future. But uh, I don't know. Any final words? Those guys are great. They they make great stuff. So we're really looking forward to it. All right. I'm still trying to choke this so cut down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you preferred the crown? I would rather take crown than Soko. Wow. All right. And to be perfectly honest, actually, um, I think I'm kind of with him. I I actually prefer the crown myself. This was a little syrupy sweet for me. Of course, then again, um, after I stopped drinking rum and switched over to things like scotch and bourbon, I got used to the real smoky kind of, you know, more bite of whiskey. And now I can't really go back to it. Or yes, this is whiskey, but that syrupy sweet is just too much for even somebody like me. Okay. So. Cool. Well, so uh, if you if you can, if you live in the area, come on down to Doggers and Yelm. Uh, grab yourself a shot of SoCo and tell a nerds drink whiskey sent you. And then go on to our, our, our Facebook page or the YouTube channel and uh, post your thoughts, your review of SoCo. We want to get you guys to start reviewing this stuff as well as us. And uh, the more people who can give their opinion, the, the better, more well-rounded info you can get. So uh, anyways, uh, on to the weekly roundup of Nerd News. News, and we will see you next week. Uh, nerds drink whiskey. See ya. Kaylee Cuoco gets married again. The Big Bang Theory actress married professional equestrian Carl Cook. She wore a bridal cape and jumpsuit. Yes, a cape. The pair tied the knot on a ranch near San Diego. He lets me wake up in the morning and say, I want to go and rescue rabbits. And he's like, all right, let's get a coffee and let's go. DC Comics spoiled Batman and Catwoman's wedding in the New York Times. The New York Times ran a story about the upcoming Batman 50. It's due out Wednesday with writing by Tom King and artwork by Mikhail Janin. With colors by June Chung and lettering by Clayton Cowles. Along with a bevy of guest artists. The article reveals that Batman isn't getting married Wednesday. Batman and Catwoman, the legendary hero anti-villain pairing, is not meant to be. At least not in the canon DC universe, that is. Avengers 4 title announced. Someone actually bothered to check the resume page kept by Avengers 4 cinematographer Trent Opelok. For some reason. It may be lucky that they did, as Omega Underground reports that Opelok gave away the movie's real title, Avengers Endgame. 
all of Modern Doctor Who available online. The good news is that all 10 seasons of Modern Doctor Who is available to watch on BBC iPlayer. The bad news is that it is just for those in the UK. This includes all specials, Christmas episodes, 50th anniversary, mini episode, The Night of the Doctor, etc. Yes, the full eras of the past four Doctors. This would be a brutal non-stop seven-day binge session. J.J. Abrams' Star Trek cast to be in Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek. Some may call them the Kelvin Timelines Enterprise crew. Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, and Zoe Saldana may be set to appear in an R-rated Star Trek movie from director Quentin Tarantino. For more info, check the link below. What's keeping Disney from dismissing Kathleen Kennedy from Star Wars? Rumors continue that Disney's Bob Iger is trying to get rid of Kathleen Kennedy. Apparently nobody wants her job because Kathleen Kennedy has created a house that's divided. Her fierce supporters that she put in place against the loyalists to the brand itself that were there before Kathleen. Magic the Gathering reveals Comic-Con 2018 exclusive limited edition collection. The new collection celebrates the brand's return home to Dominaria. It includes five Planeswalker cards. Each of the cards in the Timeless Legend set was designed to explore the ties that bind the present Dominaria heroes to icons of the past. For more info and to see the new art, click the link below. Star Wars Episode 9 returns to the Rebel base at Yavin 4. It appears that the final episode of the current Star Wars trilogy is planning on doing some filming at the Cardington Airship Sheds in Bedfordshire, UK. The location was previously used in both Star Wars A New Hope and Rogue One A Star Wars Story as the Rebel base at Yavin 4. A Thanos-inspired subreddit is about to ban more than 100,000 members. The moderators behind Thanos Did Nothing Wrong. A forum dedicated to the Avengers arch nemesis will ban half of its members on July 9th in honor of Thanos. Ultimate goal, destroying half the world's population to protect survivors from starvation and overcrowding. Infinity War makes it very clear this isn't the best way to handle major problems afflicting our very survival. But some fans have clung to Thanos' theory. That means taking his word as gospel and annihilating half the subreddit's virtual population. Of course, the entire point of superhero movies is to unplug from reality. But when things get too crazy, it can make even that a challenge. So have you ever raised an eyebrow over how Captain America survived being frozen? Marvel has used science to back up the character's survival. And apparently, the Marvel Avengers station in Las Vegas actually features an explanation for the character's survival. In the Captain America section of the area, it says... Physical examination of Captain Rogers revealed that while thickened, his blood, blood's water was not frozen. Blood tests revealed that his blood contained excessive amounts of glucose as a result of his liver processing his glycogen stores, thus lowering the freezing temperature of blood-borne water and creating a cryoprotectant. This process is similar to that of water bears or tardigrades and hibernating wood frogs who metabolize glycogen in their liver to circulate copious amounts through their body to reduce the osmotic shrinkage of cells and stop from freezing. This, however, has never been seen before in humans. Do you find this plausible enough? New Firefly series announced. Boom Studios has acquired the rights to create and publish comic books based on Joss Whedon's Firefly. The first Firefly story told at Boom begins in Firefly number one and is written by Greg Pak and art with art by Dan McDade. The story focus on the War of Unification, the war between the Alliance and the Independence, in which Malcolm Reynolds and Zoe Aline Washburn fought together on the losing side, an experience that defined their characters throughout Firefly's run. Boom is also publishing a series of Firefly Legacy Edition collections, reprinting the Dark Horse comic Firefly series. Firefly number one goes on sale in November. Heritage Distilling Company have inked a partnership with Pearl Jam's Vitology Foundation to produce a special edition home show's themed brown sugar bourbon. A portion of the proceeds from each bottle sold will go to the Vitology Foundation's home show's program to battle homelessness in King County. 
Pearl Jam will be performing the home shows, two shows at Safeco Field, August 8th and 10th, 2018, and, and as part of the shows, have committed to giving at least $1 million to fight homelessness in King County. Bottles of Heritage Distilling Company's Home Shows label Brown Sugar Bourbon will be available exclusively from the Heritage Distilling website and Heritage Distilling Washington Tasting Rooms, including locations in the Ballard and Capitol Hill neighborhoods in Seattle, Gig Harbor, and Roslyn. $20 from each bottle sold will be donated to the Vitology Foundation for this effort with a goal of raising $200,000 total. This is a limited edition bottling run. Once all bottles are gone, no additional bottles under this label will be made. Jack Daniels will no longer sponsor the Iditarod. The maker of Jack Daniels Whiskey has dropped its long-running sponsorship of Alaska's Iditarod sled race, the company said on Wednesday. The move by Louisville, Kentucky-based Brown Foreman followed a tough year for organizers of the 1,000-mile Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race, who have faced financial hardships, the loss of other sponsors, and its first ever dog doping scandal. Jack Daniels decided to go a different direction by shifting most of its marketing efforts to a partnership with the National Basketball Association. Sp company spokesman Sven Janssen said in a statement, Ahmed Best was the actor who played Jar Jar Binks. He recently tweeted that fans were so nasty that he considered suicide. Best made the announcement Tuesday in a tweet pic of himself and his son on a bridge. This was the place I almost ended my life. It's still hard to talk about. I survived and now this little guy is my gift for survival. He never mentioned Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace specifically, but did mention 20 years ago, which lines up to his role as Jar Jar Binks. He previously said the negative reaction from the public included death threats. Avengers Infinity War Blu-ray includes 30-minute Thanos backstory. It seems that a 30-minute backstory for Thanos hit the cutting room floor before theatrical release. It is rumored that the footage will be released as part of the Blu-ray release. Well, more than a rumor since it was said by Jim Starlin, who was the writer of the Infinity Gauntlet. He says that the footage won't just be included as deleted scenes, but will be incorporated back into the film and presented as an extended cut, either on the initial Blu-ray release or perhaps a special edition that will be released before Avengers 4 hits. The Walking Dead's Jeffrey Dean Morgan asks fans to stop showing up at his house unannounced. The actor who previously starred in Supernatural and the Watchmen movie took to Twitter on Tuesday to request his fans stop showing up at his house as if they're old pals just to knock on the door. In the words of his Negan character, it's not cool. The tweet in full reads, Dear people that think it's a solid plan to come to our house, take pictures, drive up to house, knock on door, it's not a good plan. It's rude and creepy. Respect our privacy, please. And you're being recorded. Perhaps it was only a matter of time, but the remaining half of a Kentucky bourbon warehouse which collapsed two weeks ago has come crashing down. Sending another 9,000 barrels of liquor crashing down along with it. The Barton 1792 Distillery in Kentucky, which can store up to 20,000 barrels, was undergoing repairs at the time of the first incident back in June. Barrels from that first collapse still haven't been cleaned up because of co-workers' safety concerns. CNN affiliate WLKY reported, It's not clear what caused either collapse. Deadpool creator Rob Liefeld got in trouble for asking Russell Crowe to audition to play Cable. Last year, Rob Liefeld tweeted Russell Crowe about the possibility of auditioning to play Cable in the Deadpool sequel. Now, the writer has revealed that this tweet got him in hot water with the studio. One night before I went to bed, I didn't know Russell Crowe was on Twitter and I stupidly tweeted to Russell Crowe, not ever thinking he'd answer me, and I go, hey Russell, you should read for Cable. That didn't turn out very well. I got yelled at a lot because I woke up, because he's in Australia, to Russell Crowe saying, read for it, 
And my manager said, yeah, Russell Crowe doesn't read for parts, Rob. You kind of insulted him. I'm like, I'm sorry. They just haven't picked cable yet, and I'm just putting it out there. And then my phone rings, so some Fox people may or may not have yelled at me for an hour. Kevin Smith is trying to find comic book men a new network. AMC pulled the plug on the program in late June, but there's a chance it could continue if it's picked up. For now, nothing is certain. The show centered around Smith and his friends, Brian, Walter, Mike, and Ming, who all hang out at a comic book store owned by Smith himself. The reality TV show ran for an impressive seven seasons, equally 96 episodes before it was canceled last week. Smith may be fishing his show around to other networks, but so far, none of the networks have been. Caught in tariff war, U.S. distillers fear losing out on global whiskey boom. U.S. whiskey distillers are fretting over the steep new tariffs they're facing around the world. They're being punished as U.S. trading partners retaliate against the Trump administration's tariffs on steel and aluminum. Now the distillers fear that long, a long boom in U.S. whiskey exports could be coming to an end. Kentucky Bourbon has experienced a huge revival over the past decade, thanks in part to U.S. trade initiatives that have opened up global markets, says Grick Dake Gregory of the Kentucky Distillers Association. For more information, click the link below.